Hello, welcome to Rappler Talk. I'm Marites Vitug, and we're training the spotlight on Hong Kong. Joining us from Hong Kong via Skype is Emily Lau, and she has been a legislator for 25 years and also a former journalist, and she was dubbed before as Hong Kong's Iron Lady. So we're going to speak to Emily about uh, what's happening in Hong Kong. I was say, telling you, Emily, earlier that, well, welcome first to Rappler Talk. As I was Thank saying, you. As, Thank you. As I was saying earlier, there's a storm here in Manila, but it's a different kind of storm out there in Hong Kong. As you said, a political storm. Uh, for the past six months, Seri uh, protests have not stopped. This is the first time Hong Kong has seen something like this. Are you witnessing a revolution? Is this a well, Do you call it such? No, no, no. I don't think Hong Kong people uh, want to wage a revolution. Because when you say revolution, it means to uh, overthrow the government. Uh, I don't think people want to do that. And uh, not... People not even are trying to fight for independence. Uh, there may be a very small number of people who want independence, but the vast majority of the 7.3 million people just want the Chinese government to keep the promise uh, under the policy of one country, two systems, whereby the Hong Kong people can enjoy a free lifestyle, uh, can have the rule of law, uh, personal safety, and of course, can develop a democracy. But now all these things are in doubt. Uh, with the six months of turmoil, uh, people feel very, very uh, pessimistic. And uh, now uh, the news says that our economy is doing very badly. We are going into a recession. Uh, many restaurants and shops have closed. Uh, the uh, hotels are empty. Uh, many restaurants are empty because uh, many tourists do not come and the local people do not want to go out and spend money. So uh, we are facing very, very difficult times. But there is still public support for the protests. That's, uh, what we read here is that there is still public support for the protests. Yes, uh, it is not support for the protests. It is support uh, for the government to re respond to the people's demands. And as I said, the people are not demanding independence or demanding the overthrow of the government. They are just demanding that uh, the government should set up an independent commission of inquiry to look into why we have six months of turmoil, the biggest crisis ever seen in Hong Kong's history and why the police uh, were so uh, brutal in beating up the protesters. So we want these things to be investigated. Uh, but the government in Hong Kong of Carrie Lam and also the government in Beijing of President Xi Jinping, they refused mm. to accede to the woman, people's demands. So that's why the people just continue protesting. So uh, Xi Jinping is not listening. Beijing is not listening to Hong Kong, apparently. No, no, no. Well, they say maybe they've heard you. <laughs> they think we are having a revolution. They think we are separatists. Oh. And of course we are not. And, uh, but Beijing, of course, does not like to be challenged. Mm. And, uh, and uh, they think they need to support the government of Carrie Lam. But of course, they should know that Carrie Lam has no credibility. And uh, she actually, she should step down because she has made such a big mistake. And even she herself admitted it. But now there is no end in sight to the protests. And it is very sad. And many business people are going to go bankrupt. And many people will become unemployed. But the business people dare not speak out. Uh, because Beijing is so harsh. And recently, the American Congress yes, passed yes. the Human Rights and Democracy Act, and President Donald Trump signed it. And Beijing is very, very angry and wants to impose sanctions on some American NGOs and would not allow the American warship to visit Hong Kong harbor. 
And so, of course, they will come to <laughs> come to the Philippines. And so, um, the situation is very tense. And because Beijing is so angry, uh, even the business people here, who of course want to see the whole thing die down, uh, they dare not say anything. So, what? Why? I mean, you uh, you have been banned from China for almost three decades. So. And you know how China, you know, exercises its heavy hand on Hong Kong. So is there pressure from Beijing? Are they pressuring Lam to stay on? I mean, as you said, she, she should step down because she, you know, allowed this protest. She's one of the reasons for this protest. Yeah, I, I think it was a report that she had uh, offered to step down several times, but Beijing refused. And I think uh, Beijing... Uh, Beijing is very, very angry with her. There's no doubt about it. But Beijing also has to be ready uh, because uh, Beijing did not expect this thing to blow up like this. And Carrie Lam is supposed to serve five years from uh, 2017 for five years. And suddenly she has to go. So Beijing has to find somebody to replace her and uh, she's not chosen by the Hong Kong people. Yeah. She was chosen by a committee of 1,200 people, mainly the business and the political elites. So Beijing has to get these things ready. And I guess Beijing also doesn't want to show the Hong Kong people that, oh, if we protest, then they immediately cave in. Mm -hmm. they, can, they want to be seen to be strong. So, so it is very, very bad. Actually, a few months ago, even the business, the chambers of commerce, they came out and asked government to accept the demand to set up this independent commission of inquiry. And then Beijing scolded them, so they dare not say anything anymore. So the situation is very bad. And of course, the economy is going to get even worse. So uh, so things are, are pretty, pretty awful. What is, but the only solution is a political solution uh, to this crisis, how do you yes. see how do you see this coming to an end, or at least you know giving Hong Kongers a reprieve? Now we had an election last yes. week. Yeah. You must have seen that. Yes, and, and you won. Have... You won by a landslide, right? Yeah. Yeah. The people have spoken very loudly and very peacefully just via the ballot box. So the people have spoken, but still. Carrie Lam and President Xi Jinping, they would not listen. So, as you said, uh, we need to wait for a political solution. Uh, we have been, uh, there have been turmoil for six months. It can go on for seven months, eight months, nine months, one year, because the people are not going to stop. And if Beijing won't, uh, won't give in, so this will continue. And of course, Hong Kong's economy will continue to plunge plunge to the bottom of the Victoria Harbour. <laughs> It'll be difficult to, to rebuild from, if ever. Yeah, because if, if you have these protests all the time, of course there will be no business. Of course people will not come. And weddings and uh, banquets have all been cancelled. So the restaurants are closing down, people are going bankrupt. How... How were these protests different from 2014? Remember, Emily, uh, um, the umbrella movement. It only lasted yeah. for about two months? Yeah, 79 days. Yeah, so how come there was a resolution immediately to this umbrella movement while today uh, it's been taking so long? Well, on that occasion, we were fighting for democracy. Yeah. And of course, in the end, we didn't get it. Yeah. And in fact, uh, we did not want it to last for 79 days. We, we know that with certain things, you go forward and then you exit. Always have to have an exit strategy. You cannot just stay put forever. So at that time, when we knew Beijing was not going to give in, so um, the organizers, I guess you remember the Occupy Trio. Yes, yes. Mr. Yes. Tai, Chen Kim Man, and Reverend Chu Yuming, they wanted to end. And my party, the Democratic Party, we want, also wanted it to end. But the young people, the students did not. And some of the protesters did not. 
So that's why the thing dragged on. But in the end, everybody knew it has to end. Because on that occasion, Beijing was not going to clear the square. So they say, you can sit there forever. <laughs> so we, of course, we won't. So we ended it. But now, this time around, uh, the people just wanted to have to the bill, the extradition bill withdrawn. And But initially, Carrie Lam refused. And that's why the thing just morphed into this big, big crisis. She only agreed to do it several months later, which was so stupid. And of course, the pro-Beijing politicians all supported her and told her, don't give in, you have enough votes, get it, go, go to a vote in the council. So the thing just went on and on. And this time round, uh, people wanted an investigation to find out why is it there was such a big blunder and, uh, and to find out the, about the police brutality. And people even wanted the police force to be disbanded and restructured. So you need an investigation. And many people, even those in the pro-Beijing camp and the business uh, chambers of commerce, they all agree it's a reasonable demand. But Beijing will not allow it. And of course, the police, the police don't want to be investigated. And so we are stuck here. And then now that we're faced with uh, young people and uh, people who feel very desperate, who see no future. So they say, OK, I've got nothing to lose. I will just keep coming up, turning up. So it's terrible. And, and some of the other people, uh, the peaceful protesters, uh, also turn up to, to support them. They don't want to show that they don't no, no longer support them. Mm -hmm. So that's why these protests will continue uh, if the government does not respond. Mm -hmm. So uh, how, how is all of this changing Hong Kong according to a documentary from the BBC? This is really about the identity of Hong Kong. And it's, you want, Hong Kongers want to show that you are different, you have your own identity separate from the mainland. Is this, is this really the underlying uh, theme of this protest? It's really to assert your identity. Well, well, maybe. Uh, you can put it this way. Mm -hmm. But as I said, what many Hong Kong people want is just to be left alone, mm -hmm. for China to keep the promise of one country, two systems, mm -hmm. and do not interfere in our domestic affairs. Because that's what one country, two systems is. Uh, Beijing is was responsible for defense and foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. And Hong Kong government, Hong Kong people, will be responsible for our internal affairs. But now, in the last few years, particularly after Xi Jinping became president mm -hmm. in 2012, uh, he asserted himself a lot and inter kept interfering in many Hong Kong affairs. And some legislators, uh, they were disqualified. Yeah. And some candidates for election were disqualified. I mean, that is really very bad. And, uh, and uh, so, so, so the people just feel that, hey, it's much too much. Uh, this, this one country, two systems is supposed to last for 50 years, mm -hmm. from uh, 1997 mm -hmm. to 2047. Mm -hmm. But we are only 2019. And it seems 2047 is here already. So that's why people feel very frustrated and very annoyed. Mm -hmm. How's the Democratic Party? Uh, is it playing a role in this uh, protest led by the young people? Or is there communication between you know, the generations? These are two different generations in Hong Kong. Well, you are right. Of course, uh, there are many young people who have uh, taken part in the protests, and we are glad that they have uh, woken up to take part. And But we also have young people in our party, too. Mm. But I think the protesters uh, stress the hallmark of this current protest is uh, there is no leader, no platform, mm. uh, <laughs> no representative. Every person just represent themselves. So, so okay, if that's what you want. But of course, I don't agree with any movement, especially with a fight for democracy and human rights. You need leaders. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons they say there should be no leader is that if there's a leader, the leader will be arrested. Yes. 
Of course, that, that, that is the case. Sometimes the leader will be assassinated too, as you <laughs> see in your country, isn't it? Yeah. And that's, that's life. But you cannot then say, oh, because of that, we have no leader. But of course, and then some people will say, oh, if the movement has no leader, uh, the government, even if they want to negotiate, yeah. uh, they will have no one to talk to. And that, is, of course, is not true. I mean, even if some of the protesters say they have no leader, but if you look at movement uh, protests elsewhere, yeah. look at Chile uh, a few weeks ago when they started having the protests, the, the president of Chile immediately invited the opposition party mm -hmm. leaders to have talks. And that's how it should be. The government should talk to the leaders, the political leaders in the legislative council. Yeah. Yeah. And there are also other leaders, whether it's in academia, in the in the religious area, mm -hmm. they have all come out, issue statements, calling on the government to uh, to engage in dialogue. So there are many people who are willing to talk. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the question uh, that there's no one for the government to negotiate with is wrong. But if the government does not want to respond, there's no, no point in talking. You know, even today, at the press conference, Carrie Lam said no. Nothing more to say about responding to the demands. I mean, she is so ridiculous, and 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 Hong Kong is going to bleed, bleed until it until it dies. Then. Oh, that's very uh, sad, and uh, it's a dark scenario, Emily. You know, uh, what about um, a Tiananmen scenario? Are you? Is that possible that? Uh, Mainland Beijing, Beijing will send its troops and, you know, uh, do violence to these young protesters, like what happened in Tiananmen Square. Um, I mean, the, uh, several weeks ago, there was a, a lot of concern that it could happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I think uh, Beijing has decided that uh, they would not send the troops to uh, quell the protests. We, because we've always got the People's Liberation Army stationed in Hong Kong anyway, mm -hmm. ever since 97. But uh, they, I don't think they will use the troops uh, to deal with the protesters because uh, many, uh, many countries in the international community have spoken out and they are against it. So I don't think Beijing want to uh, really uh, to, 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 uh, to cause such a big row. And... Uh, and but what we need now is not just the police or the People's Liberation Army. What we need is a negotiated settlement. Yes. Is to respond to the demand so that people can calm down and return to life in normal. But if we don't, then Hong Kong is going to be ruined. Hong Kong is going to be destroyed. And the thing is, I mean it. it Hong Kong, many people have been to Hong Kong, and you have been to Hong Kong, haven't you? Of course. <laughs> to yeah. shop and to eat. <laughs> yes. And you come here, although we have no democracy, but it's so peaceful, so safe, so free, isn't it? But to think that such a city can just within a few months can deteriorate mm -hmm. to the present state, this is a salutary lesson for people all over the world. So you may think you enjoy many uh, good things, freedom, uh, democracy, personal safety. But if you are not lucky, and if you are not careful, if you have someone like Carrie Lam, <laughs> everything will disappear, disappear in a very short time. And then you will say, wow, we always think the people in Hong Kong are very smart. They would never allow the city to deteriorate to the, such a state. Maybe they are wrong. Maybe we are not smart enough. Maybe many smart people are only here to listen to Beijing, and they don't care if Hong Kong burns. One final question, Emily. The way forward is through a negotiated settlement. Are, what steps can the opposition take or the protesters take to start this process? Or have they started and it's just that uh, Carrie Lam and Beijing, they're just stonewalling. Ha 
how can this process of negotiations even get started? Well, that the authorities have to invite you to talk, isn't it? So if their mean, door is shut, how can you have any discussion with them? So As I said, yeah. they can talk to the political leaders. Uh, there, there are many people they can talk to, they know, but they are not talking to anyone. There is no, they just tell the reporters nothing to say, nothing more to respond. So <laughs> what is there to discuss? So it's a waiting, they're playing a waiting game? Are they trying to stretch your patience or maybe make Hong Kong worse? I should say, it will, the yes. economy will plunge to the deepest part of the sea. Is that yes. what they're waiting for? They are waiting. Initially, they thought if they wait long enough, this whole thing will be over. Mm. And if they arrest 1,000 people, then they would have arrested all the radicals. But now they've arrested over 5,000. Yes. And there's still more people coming out. They can arrest 10,000. There will still be more. They can wait. They can wait till the cows come home. And there will still be protests. Oh, my. You know, Emily, you've painted a picture that is so clear and so um, colorful that for us outsiders, we're now seeing a clearer picture of Hong Kong. And we hope you stay safe and that maybe eventually you'll be part of the team or group that can help find a negotiated settlement. And thank you very much. And we will keep in touch. Thank you so much, Emily. And I want to tell you, because you have many countrymen and countrywomen yes. working here. How are they? I think they, yeah. are I think they are safe. And, uh, and, and we love them. They make a big contribution to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. I hope they are not too scared. How and they would not all, <laughs> all go, want to go back home. How because we jobs? need them and they are safe. How about the jobs? Their jobs of the Filipinos there? I, I, I think we need them. And unless, of course, if many of them, their employers go bankrupt or become unemployed, <laughs> then of course they will have no money to employ anyone. But otherwise, I think Hong Kong needs them and they make a very big contribution. And I'm always very grateful to them. And you tell them, if they have any problems that they face, ask them to come to see Emily Lau. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. On on that note, uh, hopeful note, uh, we'd like to thank our viewers and listeners as well. And we will keep watching what's happening in Hong Kong. Not only because uh, democracy is at stake, but also because we have Filipinos working there, as you said. Thank you, and we'll keep in touch, Emily. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.